You've been asking for more comic book art hacks. Well, I'm happy to say the wait is finally over. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, Mad Creators, to the Underground Laboratory, where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We also create comics, and from time to time, well, actually, I've only done this once before. This is the second one. This is the uh, a sequel, I guess, or it's just an extension of the comic book art hack videos that I did. It's probably one of my more popular videos on the channel, so a lot of people have been asking me to do more. And in addition to kind of some of the tips that I gave you, in response, a lot of you guys are giving me tips. So a lot of these tips are from you guys, so I really appreciate that. But I, I, I thought I would take some of these other tips and kind of, uh, kind of compile them and, along with some new tips that kind of I thought of that uh, that may help you out so before I get going I want to I want to kind of touch on a few things before I get into the actual hacks first of all so these are tips for traditional artists okay so a lot, I get a lot of digital people just saying you know oh it's just easier to do digital or whatever and and you're probably right in a lot of ways it is it is easier to go digital on and do digital techniques on a lot of these things unfortunately it's really hard to do a traditional I mean a digital comic book art hack video because it just basically you know use this shortcut or use this command or whatever so it, it, I, those, I, I can't really figure out how to do a, like a decent art hack video on digital. So if I do, maybe I'll put one together. But anyway, so this is more for traditional or people like me who kind of use a combination of, of traditional uh, illustration and digital techniques to complete their comics. So the other thing I want to say is these are art hacks. So basically, I get a lot of comments saying, why don't you just buy better materials or whatever? <laughs> of course, that's probably the way to go if you can afford it or if you happen to have those on hand but sometimes you're in a position where you don't have all those tools so you just need to hack something together that's the whole idea of an art hack now almost all of these tips or hacks whatever you want to call them there's probably better ways to do them some of them will cost a lot more money more time or whatever I don't know but this is a hack video so when you say why don't you just use better ink okay yeah you can use better ink if you don't have great ink with you, you can leave the leave the cap off and it will thicken up a little bit. That was a tip from the first one. So stuff like that. So I understand that if you if you you know buy top of the line art supplies or whatever that they will probably work better but these are hacks okay so with that out of the way i do want to get into do some of these new art hacks so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the parallelescope and check out some hacks all right hack number one the high rise ruler so this is an improvement on the first hack of the first series i did uh, I was talking about putting tape on the back of your ruler, but a lot of people, or cork like you see here, uh, but a lot of people said they, they use like coins to raise their rulers, so uh, this is another way to do it. If you want a little more lift on your ruler than you get with just the tape, then you can take two coins and just put some masking tape over each side. You know, you can put as many. I put two, you might want to put three, um, but that'll give you a little more lift. Um, but I'm not crazy about this idea, so I want to do a little bit of an improvement on it because sometimes that's a little rough on your ruler or your artwork when you've got coins on there. So I got a piece of Velcro. Now, this is the softer part of the Velcro because you know there's the hook and then, or maybe this is the hook actually. No, I think the hook's the other one. I don't know, whatever it is, it's the softer part of the Velcro. Um, so I'm taking that, and this is the self stick Velcro. Um, and sometimes you can find off-brands, you know, it doesn't need to be super powerful because we're not really velcroing things together, we're just using that. And it's, it's a little fuzzy, it's almost, you know, it's almost like you would put felt on the bottom. So I just take a strip of that, and that gives it a nice soft feel, it's not going to hurt your artwork and everything, and that'll move it up and down a little better. So that's kind of my improvement on the first hack. On to hack number two, slow your roll. So if you're like me and when you're working on your artwork, you tend to work at a little bit of an angle, that creates a little difficulty because your pens sometimes will roll down uh, <laughs> off your artboard and you don't wanna have that. So I've, I've showed other things in the last video where we can put uh, little things on them so they'll stop them from rolling. But here's another tip that someone sent in and suggested because a lot of us use two different tools and this also helps uh, so we don't have to keep grabbing more tools but if you've got two tools two tools that we use all the time uh, just take a rubber band and kind of wrap it around there and this will do two things. One, it will give you 
uh, uh, like a two-sided tool, so you don't have to keep switching. The other one, this will stop it from rolling, so it should stay on your table. And uh, yeah, that works pretty good. You can just pick it up, use one side, and then, of course, flip it around and use the other. Hack number three is stick it to your ink. So even if you're working on a flat surface, uh, you want to make sure that your ink is going to go flying all over the place depending on what you use. I'm using a little bottle cap here. Uh, so these, this is fun tack. And as you saw earlier, just a little slight nudge and this thing will go flying. But if you put a little bit of this fun tack, and you can use a number of different things. I don't, fun tack, I don't know what it's called. Blue tack, whatever. Uh, but that will secure it to your art desk. And I'm flicking it pretty hard actually, and it's not doing anything. So it's going to stay there. Your ink's not going to go flying. You can also use like a, a real, like that spongy double stick tape, or somebody said scotch dots. I'm not sure exactly what those are. But uh, the other thing you can use, if you don't have that blue stuff, if you do have a kneaded eraser, you can use a kneaded eraser, and it's kind of kind of works the same way. See? Now when you go and just add your ink, it's not going to, it's not going to be a hazard. You're not going to get that ink all over the place. So, as you can see, I'm flicking it here, and it stays pretty stationary. Hack number four is the metal method. So if you don't like that other method I just showed you with the blue tack, here's another way that's a little more hardcore, a little more metal. Uh, you get one of these metal dishes with a magnet, or the other thing you can do is use a speaker. Those also have magnets, and they're pretty heavy, so they're not going to go anywhere. You get a metal bottle cap, and it will just click to that magnet. And there's a little more, you know, if you want to move it around, that's it, it, it works a little more. The other one kind of stays where it is, but if you need to move it, but you don't want to bump it and have it go flying, this is another great alternative. Uh, and I kind of like this idea. And now tip number five, the blue line method. So what I like to do, if you see this, you can kind of see I got my logo and everything. I like to make my own templates. And what I have a large scanner printer, so I can kind of feed these 11 by 17 sheets through my printer and print out. Uh, actually, this one I even print, printed some of the type and everything on here, along with my blue lines, and then I'm just going to go over and traditionally ink it. But if you don't have one of those scanners, a lot of people don't because they, they tend to get pricey. I wish the price would come down on those things. But you can get this is this is a really bad these old blue line sheets. I got a bunch of these, and they're kind of garbage. The paper they're printed on is really bad. So if you want to make your own, now they do sell pre-printed that you can get, but some of them aren't that great. Or maybe you want to just do a different uh, kind of paper. Maybe you want to do, maybe if you're doing watercolor uh, instead of traditionally or digital coloring, you're doing watercolor or whatever, you want to use watercolor paper, paper or like a, uh, you know, a thicker, like Bristol, um, you want to make your own template. So here's a way to do that. And you can either rule it out yourself, however you want, or you can just get one of these pre-made templates. Um, but if you, like I said, if you want to use a different kind of paper, here's what you're going to do. You're just going to go through and you are going to cut along the, there's two, on this particular template, there's two borders. So we're going to cut along the inside of this border. And we're going to speed up the video a little bit because this is sort of a long process. But basically, just go through that border. You want to cut that entire thing out so you've got kind of like a little window, like a little mat frame. Next, what you want to do is along the sides, there are some little guides, and those are going to help you, like when you're using your ruler and everything, so you know, you know, they're kind of broken up so you can do your panels and everything like that. Most uh, comic book layouts have those, but you can, if you're doing it yourself, you can rule them however you like, but I'm just going ahead and just cutting a line along each one of those. Again, we're going to speed this process up. We're going to go and cut every single one of these out. And then once we're done with that, what we're going to do is just at an angle, we're going to make a little notch. And we're going to cut that notch out. Now, you can see what I'm talking about right here. See, I've just cut that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing to all of the different, uh, different places where I've already made those cuts. So just go ahead and repeat that process. Go all along, cut those notches out. All right, so that's the first step. Now you want to get another ruled paper. Again, you can rule it yourself or you can use, this is just a sheet that I had done a layout that I wasn't happy, so I messed, messed it up. So I'm just going to use it as a template. So this time we're going to do kind of the same thing, but we're going to go along the outer border and we are going to create a frame from that. And once again, we're going to speed that up. And now we have the two parts to our template. So we've got our outer border and we'll just set that aside for a second. We'll put that over there. And now we gotta get 
our other border that we cut earlier, the one with the notches, the inner border. Uh, now what we need to do is whatever paper we're going to put our design on, our, our comic page, whatever one we want to lay out, we're going to get that out. So this is just Strathmore Bristol, which is kind of kind of the same paper as the one I just cut that rule out. But again, you can use whatever paper you want. This is what I happen to have on hand. So now we're just going to put these over here, use that as a template. Now, I would highly recommend that you tape this down when you do it. I'm not doing that here, and so mine's not going to be perfect. But you definitely want to tape that down. So once you get that into position, uh, then you can go ahead and just do your blue lines. Draw your borders there. Now, where you made those notches, you're just going to draw a straight line on the bottom, the straight part of that notch. And obviously the little angle is just so you can get in there and make the line. So go ahead and do that all around your, your template. Now get your other template, the one with the outer frame, lay that down. And again, you probably want to take that down. Don't do what I'm doing. Do as I say, not as I do. And go ahead and make that outer line. And once you're finished drawing that line, you have, you now have laid out your your border panels. Well, not your panels, but you have your, your main border. But now you have all the guides you need so you can go in with your ruler and you can start laying out your panels. Okay, this is hack number six. X marks the spot. So if you have been working in comics, you probably know this where you draw a little X, which would indicate that you are going to later fill in all these blacks. So I've kind of got this kind of curvy crackle design here that I want to just to indicate that I could fill it in. Now, as I mentioned before, I use a combination of, of traditional and digital uh, techniques. So for something like this, I personally would go in and fill that in digitally. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just creating a lasso around it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and once that lasso is selected, I'm just gonna fill it in like there. And it's super simple. But you may not want to work digitally. You may wanna do everything traditional or have a nice piece of original art to sell. So that's gonna lead us to our next art hack which is art hack number seven, use archival inks. Now, I've seen some people that just go in and they fill in their X out spaces in Sharpie. Um, that's probably not a good idea because the whole idea of, of doing traditional work is so you have a nice piece that you can sell and if you're selling something to somebody, you want that to kind of stand the test of time. So, you know, I've got these big fat Sharpies and these would work really nice as far as filling things in. You can see, I'll show you, I mean, they're, they're, or you can use a regular Sharpie as well. Um, you can kind of fill it in like that. And those do a good job of filling in, and these big giant ones, uh, here I'll show you in a second, these really do a good job of filling things in. But the problem is they're not archival, which means that they will not last over time. They're gonna decolor, they're gonna like turn brown, I don't know if they turn brown or purple, but they definitely do not retain the rich black color. Um, and if you're creating artwork for a collector, you don't want that. So what I'm using here is this pit pen. And there's, this is an extra large fiber, is it Faber-Castell pit pen? And, um, and it's filled with India ink. So it, it is archival, it will last, and it's got a nice big tip. So I would pick up one of these as opposed to just a Sharpie. On to art hack number eight, get a grip. So uh, this one doesn't bother me too much, um, but some people don't like the slipperiness, I guess, of, of brushes. They want a little better grip. So what you can do is get a piece of masking tape. Um, I'm using this black masking tape. It's like a photo tape, but it's just like masking tape. And that'll give you a nice, a little nicer grip if that's something that you're looking for. This is art hack number nine, a little ammonia. So, you know, usually when we wash our brushes out or dip our brush to clean them, we use just water. But I have found, or I have heard, that if you add a little ammonia, it's gonna help uh, you clean your brushes a little better. So, just go ahead and you can kind of remove that. I've got a little eyedropper here. And I'll just drop some of that in there. And that's gonna kind of help clean your brushes just a little bit better than just plain water. Hack number 10, I light box. So if you need to use a light box or you need to tr trace something, so I have a light table 
Um, and basically the way you do it is just put your paper over, you turn your light table on and it'll kind of shine through. Now, not everyone has a light table. Now in the other video, we talked about holding it up to your window on a sunny day and let that light come through. Or I even mentioned maybe even using a laptop or something like, or a computer monitor, uh, but be careful because those screens can get damaged. But somebody suggested using an iPad. So I've got my old iPad. Now obviously you don't want to run out and buy an iPad just for this. All right, <laughs> that's not the idea of the art hack, but if you happen to have an iPad or a tablet or whatever, um, it does make a good, um, it does make a good light table. Make sure you turn your brightness all the way up. And uh, of course these are smaller, so you'd probably be using this as smaller paper. You'll have to move your paper around. Um, but so I've got a nice bright surface. I'm just gonna place my artwork there, my paper over it, and then I'm gonna dim my lights and that's gonna, that's gonna help it shine through. And then just go ahead and trace, and because the, unlike the laptop, the iPad has a glass surface, so it's probably not gonna get damaged. It's Moving on to art hack number 11, form a circle. So I use these circle templates, but if you don't happen to have these, or sometimes you don't have the right size, you need something bigger, uh, we're gonna make a little circle template. So I've got one of these, uh, I don't know if it's like a paint stirrer or paint mixer, whatever you wanna call it. And what I'm doing is I am just gonna mark the center of this. Go ahead on both sides, make sure it's straight, and you're gonna draw a line along the center. I'll do that right now. Just line that up. I'm gonna draw a straight line right here. <laughs> and as then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a notch, whatever half an inch or however, wherever you wanna make those marks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that every half or quarter of an inch along there. And then after that, we're gonna get our drill and we're gonna just drill where those crosses meet, where the notches meet plus that center line. We're gonna go ahead and do that with the whole piece of wood right there. And there you go, we have that. And if you want, you can sand it to kind of get some of that stuff out of there, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay, let's test this thing out. So we've got our pencil and I've got a little thumbtack that I'm gonna put on the end and then I'm just gonna kind of rotate it around there. I guess you kind of got to wash your hand. Um, it takes a little practice, but you'll get used to it after a while. And then uh, with some practice, you'll get some good circles. And finally, we reach art hack number 12, the noodle caddy. So you can get a pool noodle or one of these, it's kind of like a foam insulation for pipes. I like those, it's kind of, if you want it sort of more of a black look or if you want something fun. Actually, the, the colorful one might look better in the underground layer, but I'm gonna use this one because I think most people probably prefer this. And basically what you're gonna do is cut along this. Now this is a hack that I got, I pretty much stole it from my friend Corey Kerr who did a video showing me this and I thought it was so ingenious. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so you can see this has sort of a, a, a line you can cut through. It's kind of marked, but it's not cut all the way through. So you're just gonna cut that down the center and same thing with if it is a pool noodle, you'll have to make your own line. But there you go, and now it kind of opens up. Now that you do that, what you want to do is you want to just go through, and we're cutting a lot of notches on these videos, so we're cutting more notches. So you just go ahead and just wherever you want, kind of space them out, but we're gonna cut notches there. And it should look a little like this when you're done. Now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop that on to the side of our art desk. You got a nice little thing. It might even work on the bottom, like a separate one in the bottom is like if you wanna rest your wrist on it. Um, but anyway, so those little notches we cut, now we can just put our tools in there. So they're just kind of readily available for us to grab. And uh, I don't know, I kinda like this, this tip. It's a great one, so thanks Corey for that. Once again, I'm feeling generous, so I'm gonna throw you a bonus hack. So this is one of my favorite tools. This is a map ruler, and it, you know, it just rolls down your page and you can make all your lines, but it's just perfect. Uh, with these, this is one of those things where you should get a good one, all right? Uh, there are some cheaper ones out there and they're not great, but you know, if you can't get one of these, I've got a hack for you, so. How are we gonna make our own rolling ruler? Let's figure this out. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna grab our ruler, we're gonna get some duct tape, good old duct tape, and how about a couple Hot Wheel cars? And we're gonna make our own rolling ruler. So you probably guess where I'm going with this. We're gonna stick some duct tape on there. We're gonna duct tape those this ruler right onto our Hot Wheel cars, and there we go. It rolls up and down, almost as good as the, the regular map ruler. How about that? Vroom, vroom. 
All right, so there you go. That's 12 more art hacks to add to your arsenal. Of course, there's those bonuses at the end. And if you weren't really sure, that last bonus was kind of a joke, all right? <laughs> That's not really, a, you know, taping Hot Wheel cars to a ruler. This is not really something I would probably recommend, and it probably doesn't work very well. But anyway, but I do recommend getting one of those rolling rulers. So, yeah, those are the tips. Uh, yeah, so if you guys, I assume you're watching this, probably interested in comics or whatever, so if you got your own art hacks, let me know in the comments section. Also, I want to let you know that I do comics as well. This is my comic book, Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie story. It's like Goonies meets Nine the Living Dead. This is the third issue. I am working on the fourth issue. Hopefully, it'll be done soon, and you'll probably see more of that progress on this channel as I try to wrap everything up and get that stuff complete. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit surfworks.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.